this is where the rib splits off of the chuck. So this side is um, sort of a value added side if you uh, cut it correctly and I'm going to show you a nice way to pull some uh, nice Delmonico's out of there or they call them ribeyes too but mostly Delmonico steaks. Now looking at this piece if you kind of roll it over like this I mean the the chuck is split in half on the animal. Being a chuck roll, the, the neck is removed. So the neck is taken off here. So you can visualize the head of the animal being here. So as I pet the animal down, uh, right behind the neck, you have that, that hump that you see on the animals, which is basically right here. It's a, it's a less desirable piece. It's, it's good for slow cooking and, and a stew type of application and great for grinding. So. The way I'm going to start with this piece is I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to get this off and we'll come back to it later and we'll, um, what we'll do with this is figure out a way to, to make this profitable for, for the stores to work with. So I'm going to cut it a little bit over the piece right here just to show you that I'm just working off of a seam. So I'm letting, I'm just kind of using the weight of the meat to kind of pull out, finding the seam on it. and just taking it off like this. So after removing that, the next thing that I want to do is, is clean it up just a little bit. So I'm noticing over here, when you see this kind of a thicker connective tissue, this is where the, the blade of the back sits on the animal. So when they, when they pull this off, you have a, your flat iron and your mock tender. Underneath you have the scapula and the subscapula and then over here you have where the bone physically touches the paddle bone physically touches the meat. So this is something that we'd want to get off and noticing how how small this piece is and, and uh, on some of the chucks and, and some of the other cuts that you'd see this much larger and again this just creates a little bit of waste not a lot you can do with it. Getting it out clean looks good. I don't see anything else on this choke that I would want to trim now. So I can show you underneath how nice it looks. And what we're going to do now is split this chuck. So we're going to take an, up, an over blade and an under blade here. So again, I'm going to let the meat do most of the work. I'm just going to find the seams to run down. So again, I'm, I'm just separating the, the upper and lower blade of the chuck. And, and again, if you notice, I'm using the weight of the bottom to pull the top off. So if I kind of lift this up, you notice it just kind of shows me the seam as I go. Very easy, very easy to follow, very easy to stay on track. Again. just take it off here. So now we've separated the, the over and under blade and we're going to come back to this piece and we're going to do some work on that. Um, but right now what I want to work on is the upper part of this and I want to take some of the Delmonico steaks out just to show you. So this is the rib split we talked about earlier. Typically you can get two or three out of them, depending on how thick you cut them and trim them. That, that is a great tasting, amazing piece of meat right out of your chuck roll. This one it looks like we're only going to get two, which is fine. So again, two pieces right off the chuck roll. We'll come back to our trim, which is we're going to use everything on this chuck roll. Now after you split the upper and lower parts of the chuck roll, I like to take a little bit of the fat out of the middle part, a little bit of connective tissue, a little bit of fat. If you notice, right around here, there's a seam, and 
the grain runs a little differently on this piece so when you cut the chuck across you're not always cutting this the proper way so this actually is called a sierra steak and i'm going to pull it out and it performs very similar to a flank steak so it'll plump when you cook it it'll be a very tender piece and we'll pull it out and then we'll go back and we'll clean it up and you can see how thick it is and I'm just pulling some of the membrane off the top we'll go back and work our trim side a little bit. Okay. Great for barbecue application. Great as it is. Great for pepper steak. Just cutting it against the grain. As you can see, the grain runs here, so you can pull off some pepper steaks out of here. Uh, stir fry pepper steaks. You can also open this up with a pocket. And I've seen this done quite a bit where this piece would get stuffed with a, a, a spinach, a cheese, or, or anything that you need to put in here that would be that would work for your applications and then it would just roll up with stuff on this side and then it would roll up this way and then we would tie it off and you can you can oven cook it that way so it's a it's another great application that you can pull out of this chuck now typically the chuck it give, yields very little typically it'll yield a, a chuck steaks chuck roast stew grinds um, so we're just adding some value here as we go. Okay, so what we have left now is a piece where the, let's, uh, the, the short ribs come off of, where the shoulder is. That's over here. We're going we're to remove this piece, and I'm going to show you a couple applications for this. We, um, uh, basically, this is called a Denver steak, but I've seen it many many different names and many retailers put their own name on it so now this is a piece where if you notice this again your typically your chuck steaks would be cut this way and the grain is running that way also so this is a reason why this piece becomes super valuable and tender boneless short ribs on a retail application, boneless short ribs for food service. Um, and you can make steaks on them, as you'll see. And again, we're gonna go back and look at all the trim. I got the top cleaned up pretty good. Bit more we'll grab that later and I want to come on the bottom and I want to take this so I want to get down to the meat here so again there's some more seams to follow separates right here now this is a unique piece when you look at it it kind of comes into a V I'll show you what I mean let me just clean it a little bit better here take some silver skin off now looking at this piece you can see kind of a 
the grain's running this way and the grain is running this way. It's, it kind of comes in a V to the back of it. So we're going to cut it as best we can perpendicular to the grain. Again, right out of the chuck, we're going to cut it perpendicular. I'm going to face it off first and then I'm going to cut it perpendicular to the seams. So go on my trim pile and let's take it across. I'm going to cut a few of these just to show you a couple of things we can do with them. Again, this all add, it's all added value to the chuck roll. So, looking at these here, I mean, they, they so you can make stew on this end piece here. You know, a little bit like a strip steak. Um, performs well, eats well. It's cut against the grain, so it's, it's going to be very tender. And that's, you know, one of the applications on this piece, again, right out of the center of the chuck, but cut the proper way. One of my favorite steaks is right here on the barbecue. It, it performs extremely well and it tastes really, really good. We'll take this, we'll make some stew out of these pieces. Again, it's chucked so we can we can get a, a beautiful stew out of it, a beautiful grind out of it. Uh, I've even seen uh, retailers use this for a uh, for a kebab. So, because of the flavor of the chuck, you would just cut the pieces much larger, and you can get uh, more of a kebab out of it. So, okay. So now I'm going to work on the the uh, lower portion of the chuck. And I'm just going to trim it up a little bit, so I've taken some of the fat off and a little bit of trim here, and I'm going to again, I'll come back to all of that pile of fat, show you how we're going to use it. So, you can open it up a little bit again, you got seams to follow. I'm just going to roll this out here. Move this piece here. Take a little bit of the silver off here. This piece would be a little chewy in the back part, so we'll remove it. Okay, underneath. Just a little bit of trim. We'll pull some of this here. Now, with this piece, Put a few uses over here. So if we take this piece and we roll it like this, and I'll do just a little section of it just to give you an idea. So this is a nice, uh, tremendous slow cook roast. If you notice, it's pretty much fat free. just to give you an idea. We'll cut it right about here. So you could tie this whole piece, cut it in half, or again, you get a nice chuck roast without that fat layer in it with, with you know, the, Basically, this whole piece is edible, usable, uh, nothing left over. On this piece, you could, again, continue it down for a roast. I've also seen this butterfly opened up. Um, and then another way of cutting this piece here is just kind of making some, some beef short ribs. So, actually, they're, they're more of a beef rib for a barbecue application. So I'm just going to cut some strips down here and go back and clean them up a little bit. Just for a 
showing you purposes of this. And then what we might do is kind of split them in the middle and we'll stand them up. So you get a nice little barbecue rib. You can cut them any thickness you want. You can make them thicker. Very usable. That's just another application off the chuck. We can continue down with ribs. We can make another chuck roast. We can butterfly this and stuff it. A million different purposes on this piece here. So what I want to do next is go back through some of the trim that we took off just to kind of give you an idea of of what our total waste was on this complete cut. So if you notice, I'm going to use this as, as non-usable, um, very tough connective tissue, pulled off where the bone lies. We'll put this off to the side. So I'm going to bring some of that trim back. So on the chuck, the trim part of it is visually a bit between an 80-20 grind. It's a, it's a tremendous flavor grind, um, probably one of the best pieces of meat to grind. So rather than cut up the whole chuck and grind it, we're going to use all of the pieces that we took off of this chuck. And we're, we're going to get to about an 80-20 visually on this. So again, I'm just going to go back through, you know, a lot of this has got a great stew application also, but depending on the time of the year and what you're making, kebabs and stew. So, Let's bring these over. This is that piece that we talked about earlier, the first piece I took off. Um, it's, we call it the hump of the animal. It's extremely tough piece of meat. Um, great to grind, adds a lot of lean. We'll just kind of rough cut it up here. I've seen people cut this into stew, which is fine because you slow cook stew, but again, this is a piece that grinds very, very well. So a lot of these pieces are already ready to go. If you notice, there's very little more to trim on any of this. A lot of it was trimmed as I took it off. I took it off with the chuck and I used the weight of the chuck to separate a lot of these muscles. One thing about the chuck, there's, it's very complex. The neck has got a, a million different seams running through it and a million different muscle types in there. So this is a great way to get through all of that, utilize it the most and best way. I'll just kind of move this over quicker. A lot of this is done already. As you can see, we'll put that in with the fat. Um, I'm gonna show you another application on the uh, Chuck Roll 116A. Um, very basic cut, uh, very usable for a retail. Uh, typically how it's being cut today in most retailers so I'm just going to kind of go through this fairly quickly uh, a lot of you probably already seen this before but it's a it's another way of um, of cutting it and another way of displaying it in your meat cases so we discussed before you have the the rib separation over here on this side and then we on this side is, is where the would go up to the neck up to the atlas bone where the head rotates on so so this is the, the chuck roll, cut down, uh, very clean. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of trim on the top and take off some of this uh, connective bone tissue here. Not a lot of trim on it this time. We're gonna cut into steaks, so we're gonna uh, trim the steaks individually afterwards. So again, I'm gonna pull a few of the Delmonico steaks off the front to see usually get one or two sometimes you can get three depending on the size so on this one here we're not going to get too many we're, we're probably lucky to get one off of this this piece here it's it's a lot uh, thinner and skinnier so let's see if we can get another one yeah we can get another one here so we got two what I like to do after this is keep all my trim separate, we'll come back to the trim to get into stew. I like to work from the other side of it here. 
and I like to sort of square it off a little bit. So if you can see a lot of this, um, there's a lot of interacting muscles that are all kind of combined right here. So I'm going to just pick my mark and cut it right, right straight back this way. We'll come back to this piece later. I'm going to flip her over and I'm going to sort of square it off here. I'm going to take this piece here right off. Again, we'll come back to that. I'm going to clean up this side just a little bit. Okay. Now, applications. We got a thicker cut for your chuck roast. And we'll come back to this. We'll finish this off. I'm going to put one string around it. You don't need to, but I think it holds it together a little bit better for the cooking process and just looks a little bit nicer in presentation. Then, take a little off of here. Okay, now I'm just going to cut steaks. Now when you look at this steak, you can see all the individual muscles that run through this, this neck. The neck is a very complex piece. We talked about the, the rumbortis or the, the um, where, where the hump meat would be. It's, it's up over here. The Sierra runs over here. The Denver lives over here. So you can see the underblade and the overblade here with the fat in between them. So there's a lot of different things happening inside of a, a neck of beef. So again, the applications here are very simple, very easy. Sticks. We have our chuck roast. And we'll just continue on down with this whole piece. We'll make another roast. Or steaks, depending as, as needed. Again, you don't have to time your pot roasts, they're slow cook, but it just it holds it together a little bit, just adds a little bit more look to it. And everything else would be used for stew, for grind, or more steaks. You could do more steaks, more roast, more stew, more grind depending on the time of the year, and what your applications are for the product and what you need. So. That's the two ways of cutting the chuck rolls.